Hi everybody, welcome back to Molecular Biology and Biotechnology with Lucy. Today is part 2 of RNAs. We'll be talking about small RNAs. These are distributed in the nucleus, some in the cytoplasm, or sometimes in both. And they range between 20 to 300 nucleotides, but they are in large copies from 100,000 to a million copies per cell. Small nuclear RNAs is one of them, and it is involved in RNA processing and also polyA addition. Remember the polyA tail and gene regulation. Now, these RNAs usually complex with proteins to form ribonucleoproteins, SNRP, ribonucleoproteins. And you one, U2, U4, U5, U6 are involved in intron removal as shown on this diagram. Remember the pre-mRNA which has introns and exons. These are intervening sequences that must be removed. So the SNR and Ps are going to come and bind to our intron. And this is what is called a spl spliciosome. The process of splicing spliciosome. Once it has bound, then it's going to excise it or remove it or cut it off from the RNA. Then we are able to obtain a mature mRNA that can now be translated into proteins. Now there is a special SNRNA called U7 that is involved in the production of correct 3' prime ends for the histones. Histones are proteins that bind on DNA as it is being packaged into chromosomes but they do not have a poly A tail so U7 is very important in that pathway. We have another small RNA called micro RNAs. They are short single stranded and they are about 21 to 25 nucleotides and they are made during nucleolytic processing of products of genes. You know during gene production we will be having several release of small RNAs and they are called micro RNAs. Now mature ones usually will hybridize. You see they are single stranded. So they are able to hybridize to a certain target mRNA to form a hybrid that is not perfect. And this hybrid or duplex is formed within the three prime and translated region. So if this is five prime, three prime end, of a specific mRNA, then these microRNAs will come and bind here and form a duplex that is not perfect, and this leads to the arrest of translation. Once that is done, it means we will not have a protein. So it's a form of regulation of genes, so that if the body feels that this is not an important mRNA and we don't need what the product that it's about to form, then can be regulated at that particular point. We have small interfering RNAs. These are also about 20 to 25 nucleotide long, but they are double stranded. And these ones usually come out from cleavage of long double stranded RNAs. So the body also has some double stranded RNAs that are involved in a pathway called RNA interference. So if this was the double stranded RNA, it will be diced or it will be cut into smaller interfering RNAs. Now, these ones will now form RNA RNA hybrids anywhere within the RNA where they are complementary. So, if here now here they are forming a risk, a complex, complex called risk RNA inducing silencing complex, then they will come to your mRNA that is complementary to the base pairs that it has. And once it has bound, then it will activate degrading of the mRNA by nucleolytic machinery. And this mainly happens in Peabody's organelles. And this also we can see that they are actually preventing translation from happening. Because once you cleave mRNA, then we cannot have proteins being made. Now, these two are very important. MicroRNAs and small interfering RNAs are being used as tools in medicine and research. 
For example, it can be used as new potential targets for therapeutic drug development in humans. Now, what do we mean by this? For example, if you want to create a drug that targets a certain pathway, remember, once you have an mRNA, we are saying it is forming into a certain protein. So probably this mRNA is for a certain, a certain disease because diseases induce certain changes in the cell proteins production and all that. So assuming this is an mRNA disease, so we can create a drug that looks like, uh, for example, a microRNA so that it will come and bind to that specific sequence that microRNA will bind there and once it has bound of course it will cause translation to be arrested and that will mean whatever disease that would have arose or has already arisen can now be stopped by that therapy then small interfering RNAs are also being frequently used in something called knockdown of specific protein levels in experimental laboratory procedures so maybe you're doing a, a procedure of trying to test or the purpose of a certain gene in a certain disease in the lab so there has been this gene, gene knockout technology that has been used and here we usually have you want to study a specific gene by removing it and then you observe how it behaves in the cell. You can use cell cultures or in an organism like mice. We'll be talking about animal models. So maybe you're using mice to study a certain gene that causes cancer. So you will remove that gene and then you will observe. Once you have removed the cells in the cell, you'll observe the effects it will have in the cell whether the cell will die, it will survive and all that, or if it's an organism you are using, that is an animal model. But now, of course, this is quite rigorous. It's quite rigorous. So now, instead of using this, now we are replacing this, or an alternative is the use of small interfering RNAs, because you can have an artificial small interfering RNA that will go to that specific gene, which instead of removing it or knocking it out, you will just introduce the small interfering RNAs and we have said once they make those RNA RNA duplexes it causes this to be degraded your mRNA to be degraded and therefore protein does not form and therefore you are able to regulate or to decrease or knock down the protein level of that particular a gene of interest and therefore you will have achieved the same if, if you are doing the same as if you are doing a gene knockout then we have small nucleolar RNA that are also used in RNA processing maturation and methylation we'll be looking at methylation in epigenetics then we have another RNA called guide RNA it forms part of the editosome or RNA editing tools in mitochondria. Remember, we have DNA in mitochondria. So DNA in mitochondria will form an mRNA. Now for us to be able to edit that, we are going to have the guide RNA helping us in inserting or deleting stretches of uridylates. So it will contain, this guide RNA will contain sequences that hybridize to matching sequences of mRNA so that any modification that is needed, be it an insertion or deletion, is able to be carried out. So they are guiding, they are guiding RNA editing in mitochondria. We have something called negative sense RNA. Normally these are viral single-stranded genomes. Remember we said viruses can have RNA as the only genome. So it can be negative sense. And this means that this RNA that is in that organism, which is a single strand like that one, is acting as a complementary strand from which mRNA is synthesized. Remember, mRNA is important because from here is where we get proteins. 
so even the virus needs to make proteins so this uh, uh, viral genome which is the negative sense RNA will be the complementary strand from which we are going to make an mRNA using RNA dependent RNA polymerase in this case the template is an RNA that is why we are using RNA dependent RNA polymerase remember in eukaryotes because we have DNA as the template we usually have DNA dependent RNA polymerase now, for example, this negative sense is found in arthropod bone viruses like Rift Valley fever and tomato spotted wilt virus. And in vertebrate RNA, negative sense RNA viruses include Ebola. We all know Ebola virus, antiviruses, you know, influenza viruses, Lassa virus, and you also know rabies virus. Now, this means from negative sense RNA, we have also something called complementary RNA, which is a viral RNA transcribed from the negative sense. Okay? So whatever we get, the RNA that we get from negative sense is called complementary RNA, and it will serve as a template for protein synthesis. Now, apart from negative sense, we have positive sense, which is also a viral single-stranded RNA. That is like that, maybe single-stranded. Now, this one, the positive means it directly acts as the mRNA. So, this will directly be translated into proteins. I think now this is clear. Now, such RNA viruses include hepacivirus, West Nile virus, dengue virus the SARS we have been hearing about the SARS MERS SARS-CoV-2 coronaviruses especially these days and rhinoviruses that cause common cold we have one, another small RNA called small cytoplasmic RNA and this is usually a component of signal recognition particle SRP that helps in targeting of secretory proteins and also in tRNA processing We'll be talking about the secretory proteins as we go on, but you can read further what are secretory proteins. We have another RNA called catalytic, and you remember when we talked about ribozymes, they act as protein enzymes in catalyzing removal of introns, peptide bond formation, among others. Then we have antisense RNA, ARNA. Now, this is artificially used to block translation of particular mRNA so as to prevent formation of harmful proteins so it is going to bind it is complementary to a particular mRNA so it's an artificial product that will target a specific mRNA to prevent harmful proteins and this is useful in therapy or in treatment finally we can categorize RNA functions into four summaries that is storage or transfer of genetic information structural catalytic and regulatory so what i want us to do is for all the rna types that we have covered from the three major types of rna rrna mrna trna and then the small rnas that we have covered which are so many I would want you to determine the function categories and also explain. For example, rRNA is both structural and catalytic. So you can now go categorize each and every other one and it will help you to be able to process information more easily because you can be able to say these ones are storage, these ones have structural and for your information, a type of RNA can have more than one category. Like for example, you see I've given ribosomal, which is both structural because it forms part of ribosomes and it is also catalytic. So it's possible to have more than one category for one particular RNA type. That is all for today. Thank you so much guys for continuing to watch my videos and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, 
I want to remind you, please do subscribe now. So stay tuned so that we lay the basics and then we go together into those more practical sessions.